Lastly, we are going to look at performing evaluation using the net asset method. And this calculation can either be done using fair market values or liquidation values. With this valuation methodology, the company's assets form the basis of the valuation. And we take the value of assets, we deduct the value of debt, and that leaves us with the value of equity. Now, when we are performing this calculation, either we can use fair market values or we can use liquidation values. And this depends on whether the company is a going concern or not. Now, in all other valuation methods that we covered, I told you the company has to be a going concern if you want to use that method. However, if we do have a company that is not a going concern, we can use the net asset method. So please note, if the company is a going concern, we should perform this calculation using fair market values. So we take the market value of assets, we deduct the market value of debt, and that will leave us with the market value of equity. On the other hand, if the company is not a going concern, we then perform this calculation using liquidation values. So we take the liquidation value of assets, we deduct the liquidation value of debt, and that will leave us with the value of equity. So please note, you must check whether the company is a going concern or not. And this is the only method that we can use where the company is not a going concern. Then when can we use this method? We should use the method if the value of the business is principally represented by the fair value of their assets rather than their earnings or their future operating cash flows. For example, if we have an investment or a property holding company, the value of the company is going to be principally represented by the value of their assets. So in other words, if we have an investment company, the value of the company will be determined based on the value of the investments that they hold. Similarly, if we have a property holding company, the value of the company should be determined from the value of the property that they own. So we look at the assets instead of looking at earnings or cash flows. And the reason for this is the value of the company is determined by the assets that they hold and not necessarily the future income or the future cash flows that the company will generate. Now this could also mean that the company doesn't generate a sufficient return on their assets and they would obtain a higher value if they actually closed the business and they sold the assets. So the assets are worth more than the future earnings or the future cash flows that the company will make from operating. And if that is the case, we should rather value the company using the net asset value method instead of an earnings multiple or the free cash flow method. Then lastly, this method is also often used as a reasonability test. You'll remember I told you at the beginning of this lecture, we always have our principal or our main valuation, and that is then supported by a reasonability test. So, we use one methodology in order to perform the main valuation and any other methodology as a reasonability test. And the net asset method is often used as a reasonability test. Then lastly, please note, if we perform a valuation using the net asset method, this is going to give us an indication of the minimum value of the company. And the reason for that is some assets do not qualify for recognition in terms of IFRS. So when we are performing this calculation, we take the value of our assets. But certain intangible assets don't meet the definition of an asset. So we are not allowed to record them as an asset in our financial records. So for example, things like human capital, intellectual property, brands, copyright, all of those things hold a value, 
but sometimes because they don't meet the recognition criteria, they are not allowed to be classified as an asset. And because of that, this value that we calculate over here is going to be the minimum value because it doesn't include any of these intangible assets that we are not allowed to recognize as assets. So please just note that if you are performing a calculation, this should give you your minimum value. And that then brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank you, guys.